I'm not I'm not wasting any time with this. We're talking about the NFC East and some of the games the Eagles haven't played yet. I'm not comparing the Eagles to any of these teams, okay? Because unlike some fans, I'm very humble about issues with the Philadelphia Eagles and what they need to do. And I don't think the Eagles are perfect. And I don't think the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. I mean, whatever. You know, right now it's too early to really say anything. And I take everything week by week. Unlike some fans going forward with the whole thing, okay? So... You know, talking about the Cowboys in general the past couple weeks, okay, the Dallas Cowboys lost against the Cardinals, okay, which I had never expected was going to happen. Between the last three weeks, to fill, I mean, between the last three weeks for the Dallas Cowboys, okay, let's get this straight. I think the I think the Dallas Cowboys have had three easy breaks with their schedule. Okay, number one, they faced the Giants, which were horrible, and they and looks like the Giants have gotten better since that game. They've gotten worse since that game. Besides that Cardinals game that they came back in the second half of, which that's why I had the Cowboys winning this Cowboys Cardinals game in the first place. I mean, it was a no brainer for me at the end of the day. Okay, then the the, the Cowboys get another break with you know Aaron Rodgers not playing you know, being out with the Achilles injury. So I felt like, ah, the Jets, you know, maybe their defense could put up a fight. Maybe, ah, they barely even did that. So in Cowboy fans' minds these last couple weeks for week one and two, well, we scored, you know, we've we've scored 70 points. Uh, we've only given up 10 points in two weeks. You know, we're Super Bowl bound. You know, we're the team. You know, it's just stupid. I feel like if you score 30 plus or 40 plus points every game it means that uh it's score 30 plus 40 plus or bust that's not how the nfl works okay you have to face adversity in games and obviously you know it maybe if the cowboys face the bills and the chiefs and they totally dismantled both of those teams that hey that's some that's those are some pretty good wins to really show that maybe that team is really going somewhere but it didn't impress anybody okay that's why i was tired of hearing about the eagles you know oh the eagles barely beat the patriots the eagles oh the eagles and vikings oh they they had too many injuries, you know, stuff like that. And look at now, look what happened going into this Cardinals game. Look at what they looked like. What Look at what they presented us in that freaking game that I couldn't be any more happy about because of these stupid people, okay, that look, I think they, you know, the Cardinals are 0-2. Okay, now I don't know if this is going to be their only win of the season. I think the Cardinals are one of the worst teams. Okay, I don't care if they got nine, ten sacks for the season. Well, before this game happened, I think they had what nine, ten sacks. I think ten sacks for the season. You know, Gannon's defense has ten sacks, but what is it to show? Okay. You can't win in style. Winning in style doesn't mean you're going to a championship game. Winning by 30, 40 plus every game does not mean you're going to a championship game. You know, you could win the regular season, win the division, but when you get into the playoffs, it's a different animal. Okay, we got to know that at the end of the day with this whole entire thing. Now, going into this game for the Dallas Cowboys, yes, Trayvon Diggs torn his ACL, and we knew that things were going to happen here. You had, you know, Demo uh, you had, uh, you know, uh, Deron Bland, you had Jordan Lewis, you had Curse. Like, they tried to fill that spot, move some guys around a little bit. And Stephon Gilmore didn't play well either. I don't think he played fantastic. And, you know, he had Hollywood Brown that had some good receptions. You had the one touchdown at the end of the game, or the one big reception that was, I think, was blown coverage at the end of the game. I think Malik Hooker kind of messed up on that play. Um, you know, you have a team right now that I, I think is starting to find out that they're not as good as they think they are. Okay, this this game doesn't mean they're going to be bad the rest of the year, but they're not Super Bowl contenders right now. The, uh, going into a week three game or after a week three game, this is week three, guys. Week three, all right? So not only did they struggle with Trayvon Diggs and Hollywood Brown is the only, I mean, Hollywood Brown is nothing, you know, I think he's a good receiver. I just don't think he's with the right quarterback right now. I think he should be on a different team. I don't know, but this is nothing compared to what you're going to be facing with other, other receivers on that side. You're going to have to face later on in the season. Never mind the Philadelphia Eagles and what they have offensively at receiver in general. Okay. And that's what I got to say about that. Now, secondly, they were dealing with offensive line problems going into this game with Zach Martin being out. Tyron Smith could just never stay healthy. That's been what's the problem? That's been the problem with them the whole entire time. They had no center. So they were pretty much out three linemen in this game. OK, and protection wasn't great. I don't know how many sacks they had in this game. I'm not sure what the Cardinals had, but they got the Dak. They hit Dak up plenty of times today. You had ex-Eagle Kaiser White at the end of the game that kind of sample it there uh, with the big pitch, okay? Dak Prescott being Dak Prescott as usual. If it's not going to happen in the first two weeks, it's going to happen soon. And yeah, he threw into triple coverage. Yeah, he did. 
Okay, not surprised there. Not. I was happy it happened. Definitely, which puts the <laughs> which pushed the cherry on top of the cake even better. Um, you know, to kind of end a game in old Dallas Cowboys fashion. Okay, um, but you know the the Cardinals were still up by two scores at the half. Okay. Um, I, I think, you know, uh, with, with the Cardinals, I think their kicker made a, I think he made a, I forgot. I think he made a 62 yarder. I think the best, I think in the NFL, I think he made a 62, 62 yard field goal, which really did help uh, before the half. Um, and then the Cardinals offense really couldn't get anything going. I think they went into two series and only had like two to three yards. I mean, the plays were so vanilla and just, there were just handoffs up the middle. Like, and then he did a trick play on three throws. It was like, there were some, they were doing some cute shit. I just didn't get what they were doing at all. It just really made no sense. And it was allowing the Cowboys to come back, but the Cowboys in the red zone, holy shit, it was bad. It was bad. Okay, as much as Mike McCarthy is running the ball a lot more, so I totally get that. You're not, you know, you're not throwing with Dak over. I don't know how many times Dak threw today. You know, over 40 times, whatever the case may be. I don't think he threw that much, but you know, they they were running the ball a lot. I think they have a nice combination of running backs. They just it just wasn't enough. I think there were some nice fits with the Cardinals, and they took some shots. To, they took they took some shots definitely. Um, the, some 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 of the cowboy receivers get get some pi calls you know and, and there were some calls that were bs and there were some that were you know that's, that happens at every game it is what it is um but you lost against the cardinals <laughs> oh, i i don't i don't know what else to say about it i'm not going to go play play by play i i think I, dallas uh, is definitely just took a step back this game uh they have injuries um injuries to the offensive line injuries to the cornerback position I think they're a lot weaker than we expect where's Mozzie Smith where has he been I mean I've been trying to like actually I actually just thought about Mozzie Smith it was like the fourth quarter and I was like I haven't heard anything about Mozzie Smith the past few weeks what happened with him is he doing anything what's going on I have no idea so before you get to say anything about the Philadelphia Eagles I don't I'm not comparing the Eagles to the Cowboys I don't care because at the end of the day I'm humble about my team and what we're doing week by week if you tell me what's going on with the Eagles oh we're fine Super Bowl contenders. You know how it is. No, I don't do that shit. I don't say, oh, we scored 30 plus in two games. You know, uh, yeah, we're, we're Super Bowl contenders. We're winning in September and we're going to be winning the rest of the months. Okay. No, this doesn't mean, like I said, to be fair, this doesn't mean the Cowboys are going to play like this later on, but this is when I said you have to, t this is a week to week league. Okay. This is a week to week league because injuries happen, play calling changes for the good or for the bad. Okay, you never know what can happen with, with your football team. The Eagles have been getting characteristic wins, okay? They have been getting character-driven wins to where they're finding ways to win football games, okay? Dealing with adversity, I'd rather deal with adversity early in the season than score 40-plus points on a couple teams and peak way too high against two really bad teams and now add a third bad team to that list when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys, OK, I, I see like who's been saying what between if it's content creators, if it's guys that are content creators that are on Twitter and they're just trying to get, uh, or, you know, trying to act like sweep this loss under the rug and act like it doesn't matter and, and just try to act like everything's normal. And it's not. It's it's really weird behavior in a lot of ways. I don't know. For me, I can't lie about my team. I have to be very honest with it every single week. And trust me, people will tell me like, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's not how it, you're talking crap about Kenneth Gainwell. We can run. Brian Johnson, you don't like him. We get, I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. I get it. So obviously the rest of the NFC East is going to be waiting for the Eagles to lose on Monday night because that's the normal thing that I, they they're going to wait for that. You know what I mean? It's the Eagles turn now to lose. So we all lost, you know? So, and I think the Eagles can win Monday. We'll see what happens. But I, I mean, I'm not trying to compare, but you know, the Cowboys, what they said, the Cowboy fans, what they said the past couple weeks. And you know, for a fact, when you piss off the Cowboys during a game, okay, when the Cowboys are pissed off, you know how you can tell. You could tell when, you know, everybody is, you know, Micah Parsons is, is grabbing everybody and he's like, you know, the, the, the morale is so bad on that sideline. You could tell that they're turning on each other. They're getting a little pissed off. But they're not trying to over go over the line. Like, you know, when you're in the Cowboys heads in a game, what happens? Okay. I think Josh Dobbs played really well. I think Connor played really well. I think, you know, I, I think Hollywood Brown had a few good receptions. He had one for a touchdown. I think they played really good. I didn't expect it. I had the Cowboys win this game by a a lot of points. I I mean, Gannon, I thought he was going to blow this lead in the second half. They played good in the first half, and then once that second half came, I was like, eh, you know, even if the Cowboys do win this game, they come back and win it, 
it's still going to be a bad loss regardless or bad a bad win regardless okay um you know because it's it's not a good team it, it's not it's nothing comparable um so um <laughs> that's all I got to say for the Dallas Cowboys and and what they had to deal with I know it's going to be crickets uh for a bit for a couple of days unless the Eagles lose Monday then we'll you know, hear it all but let me tell you um you know the Eagles don't face the Cardinals so the second I think what the second to last game, which at that time we probably don't even need to put starters out. So we'll see, see what happens. So that was the Cowboys game. Um, now going to the Commanders Bills was uh, is interesting because the Eagles have the Commanders in a couple weeks um, after the Monday night game. We'll have the Commanders, and I think I think when it comes to the defensive line for the Commanders, the offensive line, um, you know, having Curtis Samuel, have you know, just just the receiver gr group is great. Having Gibson, having Robinson, you have a power back, you have a speed back. I think there's a really good mix of great players in that offense and a, a great defense with some good outside linebackers. I think they're very good. Terry McLaurin and, like I said, Curtis Samuel, great receiver. So um, Sam Howell played his first game. I, I, I know Washington, I think, has been overhyped the past couple weeks. Sam Howell has, been, has had some clean pocket looks at times, and I think he's got an arm. I think he could throw the ball, and I think there are times he could be very accurate. But I think once the Bills really started getting to – really started getting to Sam Howell, it was really affecting him. They were hitting him and hitting him and hitting him. This is going to be a big uh, learning curve, a learning, um, you know, aspect of the game for Sam Howell. You know, he's never been through this, this drastically. He is a pure starter right now. Uh, but the Bills just, I mean, he threw four, what, four picks and he was sacked, I think, 10 times, what, nine or 10 times in this game. I mean, this got, I mean, they just got destroyed. They just got literally destroyed. I mean, look, why? I mean, I told people in the last video, I told people last week's last weekend's video when it comes to the Washington, people were fighting with me in the comment section about Sam Howe and how great he is. I'm like, wait till he f plays a really good team and see what happens. See how he comes back from, you know what I mean? Like he, th you know, you pressure him. He panicked thrown a lot coming off pressure off the back foot. He did it multiple times, guys, um, you know. I think Sam Howe, when he has a clean pocket, I think he's got an arm. Like I said, I think he could be accurate at a lot of times, a lot of moments. I think there's something there with him at times. But um, when you have a defense going after you, you have to prepare yourself of, of how you're going to deal with, you know, if you throw a couple picks in the game, how are you going to come back from something like that? And the Bills just took advantage of it all day. They hit Sam Howe all day nowhere to go. So I think um, it would have been really cool to see two 3-0 and teams if the Eagles do win Monday night and see if Washington gets the 3-0. It would have been nice to see two 3-0 and teams. NFC East battle at the link next Sunday at 1 o'clock would have been awesome. Um, but, you know, I think there is a weakness here uh, when it comes to the commanders. I think it's that quarterback. I think if you dismantle that quarterback, I think if you get pressure on him and hit him and scare him and kind of, you know, make him worry a little bit, you know, from his blind side a little bit from these defensive ends I think they could do some damage and the Bills did a lot of it um so that was the um the commanders and Bills game so um another loss for the NFC East now the Giants 49ers there's really nothing much to say about this guys the the Giants are just horrible okay um you pay your quarterback 40 million dollars and trust me the the 49ers didn't have Brandon Ayuk the 49ers I mean I mean to be honest with you they should have been picked off. The Giants should have had three or four extra interceptions. That's how that's how bad Brock Purdy was throwing the ball. I mean, there was they should have picked the ball three, four times. Um, the Giants just don't have weapons. This is the same thing we say every single week with the Giants. The Giants are absolutely terrible. The Giants don't have a number one receiver. They have Waller, but that's not enough. Okay, you pay your quarterback $40 million. Not only do the Giants have no weapons, but there are wide open receivers at times and Daniel Jones completely misses them. I think part of it is Daniel Jones sucks, and I think part of it is there's no weapons for him to really – you don't really have any counterparts to this offense. When you look at the Giants, oh, Daniel Jones and this receiver, oh, my God. You have no threat that makes you fear them offensively, okay? You don't. And Saquon Barkley didn't even play in the – I don't even think he played in the game. You have Matt Breda that used to be on the 49ers. You know, he's not a bad back, but he's not Saquon Barkley at the end of the day. The pass protection is horrible. The offensive linemen cannot hold up their blocks. It's just bad. It's just really that bad. And the 49ers defense just cooked them. I mean, just there was nowhere to throw the ball. There was nowhere to run. It was just, it was just insane. So – 
the Giants, I don't get how they pay a quarterback and and just don't are, are not aggressive during these times to trade for a receiver or you know, I think like I said, I think Waller is good. I think like there's there's something there with him, but there's nothing that makes me fear the Giants this year at all. I think we'll be dead last in the NFC East because I think every NFC East team besides the Giants have legit weapons and have more of a legit a legit, a legit shot to get into the playoffs, especially within the NFC. Um, you know, so that's been the problem with the New York Giants so far, and I don't think it's going to change. I don't think they're going to trade for anybody. Um, I think they have great coaches. I think they have fantastic coaches, but I don't know what the deal is with you're paying a quarterback and um, you're not giving him help. And Daniel Jones, I don't think is even worth what he's getting paid right now. So I think they're throwing money out the window. Um, and I don't think he's the right quarterback for that team. So that's all I got to say about that. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. We talked about the NFC East in general. We went over the Dallas Cowboys and the Cardinals, I think, which was the, which is the most important one because obviously the most fans I hear from are from Cowboy fans. Um, week by week league, you know, don't take things for granted. Don't take wins for granted because once you start doing that, um, you're gonna you're gonna be diluted into nothing uh, because all you're thinking about is how many points you win by, and, and you have to look at who you're facing too. Like the Dallas Cowboys have not faced any. Anything. I think the uh, the Dallas Cow. If you want to talk about the the Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys, I think the Dallas Cowboys have faced the w even worse talents than what the Eagles have faced in the past couple of weeks. Um, so, like I said, we'll see what happens down the line. Let me know what you guys think about the Dallas Cowboys embarrassing themselves. The fans are crying. They're upset. They don't know what to do with themselves. They are just in shambles and. It's going to be quiet, and please, please, guys, like, I hope I get so many frustrated Cowboy fans saying, you don't make sense, and I can't wait to see those comments because that's the best thing about it because the – it's awesome because I know people are going to be pissed off. <laughs> so that's how it goes. But you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes what up, follow us. Peace out, guys. Peace.